All right, going to do a video on this really heretical statement that Brian makes in his sermon called The Bible Doctrine of off Chronology. And a lot of what he said, uh, says uh, in the sermon I agree with, okay? I do believe it is important to get away from the city, the electronic smog, all the EMF radio waves and all this other stuff in a the city that are pretty bad for you. The artificial light and everything. But what he says in this part of the sermon that about 36 minutes in, just really heretical. He tries to... Uh, you know, make his connection between 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verses 13 to 15 and tries to make it seem like that's, you know, somehow you can get a divorce if the wife doesn't want to live off grid or something really, really weird and bizarre, okay? Let's get right into this. I'm doing a video on this because he's going to lead people astray into thinking that this is grounds for divorce when it's not, okay? Not one, not for one second, okay? Not, not one bit. So let's get right into this. Like there's going to be a civil war in this country? I'm getting a little scared. And I, I have a cabin in the mountains, and I've always wanted to go there and live there full time. But my wife, she's just, she, we, she just plainly said, no, I will not do that. I will never move there. And then what does the Bible say? Well, back in the book of Proverbs, chapter 21, verse 19, it says it's better to dwell in the wilderness than, than with an angry woman, angry and contentious woman. You say, well, then you're saying I should leave my wife? Well, let's see what the New Testament has to say. And now, what he does, he makes this really weird, try to, tries to connect uh, Proverbs, I think it was 21, 19, with uh, 1 Corinthians 7, 13 to 15, just, just heretical, just, just no nice way to put it, heretical. With me, okay? Don't jump to conclusions. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried, or be reconciled to her husband, and let not the husband put away his wife. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. You might be saved man, and, and you have a lost wife, and she is pleased to be with you, and whatever, then don't divorce her. That's what it's saying there. Verse 13, And the woman which hath an a husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her. I see what he's trying to do. He's trying to make it seem, well, if your wife doesn't want to live off grid, then just get rid of her. That's not what the context of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 10 to 15 is saying. Okay, the context is about an unbelieving spouse. It's got nothing to do with living off grid. So like, I have no idea what he's trying to go, where he's trying to go with this. Weird. Her, let her not leave him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. Okay? If you're getting along, and if, if everything's okay, then don't leave them. Don't get a divorce. Okay? That's fine. Verse 15. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases... But God hath called us to peace. For what knowest thou, O wife? Whether again, what does any of this have to do with living off grid? Again, it's like, huh? Very, very hard. It's just twisting the scriptures to try to make it seem like, oh, get a divorce and they don't want to live off grid. Weird. For thou shalt save thy husband. Or how knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? The New Testament does give grounds for divorce. Absolutely. If you are married to a lost person, if you're saved and you're married to somebody that's lost and they're not pleased to dwell with you, they don't want anything to do with coming out to a place like this. They can't see the danger that lies ahead for this country. No, no look at that. Not pleased to dwell with you, okay? Then he lumps it in with, oh, uh, come out and live off grid. That's not what the text is saying. He's twisting what the text is saying. It's heresy. The danger of being on grid? I mean, Texas. Just this year. Massive power outages. Now, now watch it. He's going to start guilt tripping his subscribers because, you know, I would like to live off grid myself. I personally want to live off grid. I'm sure other people would like to live off grid, get away from the uh, the electronic smog, the EMF rays, the Wi Fi, micro, micro radiation, uh, all this stuff, the artificial lighting, just the, just the, all this stuff that is just causing problems and everything. But not everyone's in a position where they can. You can't just drop your nine to five job and go out and live in the woods. See, it's very easy for him to say, oh, live out in the woods, live off grid, because he doesn't have a nine to five job. He lives off donation money. And of course, nothing wrong with supporting a biblical ministry. 
But to just guilt trip your followers into, oh, you gotta live like I do and that kind of stuff, you know, it's not biblical. It's hit. It's uh, wicked. Um, didn't even know it up here. We didn't feel anything. You say, well, yeah, it's just Texas, just local. What if it becomes national? We're talking about Operation Dark Winter. You can look into that. Military operations for if the power goes down. <laughs> what are you going to do? You say, well, okay, maybe if everything just goes, goes on. I'm not, I don't get into this doom and gloom conspiracy stuff. Okay, fine. What about civil unrest that we've already seen in this country? People that have lost everything that were living in the city. How their business is burned down by a bunch of people. Be Black Lives Matter, Antifa, whatever other satanic organizations. What about that? You know, um, you say, have you ever uh, advised a brother or sister to divorce their husband or wife? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. I've gone through some of the agony with some of the brethren where they tell me they're crying and they're saying, brother, I'm trying everything I can to keep my marriage together. I don't want to. It's also worth pointing out, too, that divorce is allowed in some cases. For example, fornication is grounds for divorce. Let me show you that in the word of God. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 32. And obviously this is Sermon on the Mount, so it is dispensationally um, for the Millennial Kingdom, obviously. Uh, Matthew chapter 5 through 7, the Sermon on the Mount. Okay, this Dispensation is not written to Christians, but there is some instruction in righteousness that can be applied. Matthew chapter 5, verse 32. But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her, that is divorced, committeth adultery. Okay? Of course, Matthew chapter 19 and verse number 9. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery, and whoso marrieth her, which is doth put away, or sorry, which is put away, doth commit adultery. Read the verse wrong. But yeah, so fornication is grounds for divorce. But if it's not for fornication, then it is essentially committing adultery. Well, it is adultery. Okay, divorce plus remarriage is adultery. Except it be it be for fornication. Okay? Should point that out, okay? So divorce is allowed in some cases. If it's for fornication, if there's the unbelieving spouse in certain cases that's allowed. So but living off grid, where is that in scripture? You know, it tries to make that weird connection again divorce i don't want to go through that we have children i don't want them to go through this but i have a wife that's lost i have a husband that's lost what am i supposed to do if you're not pleased to dwell together and you want to get out to a place like this you want to get out here where there's peace ask for the old paths and you shall find rest for your souls you want to get out here if you're a man you have a cat. But again, like not everyone's in that position where they can. They can't just again drop their nine to five job and guess you know, it's very easy for him to say it again because he's living off donation money, but not everyone can just drop what they're doing and go live off grid. Guilt tripping his followers like a cult leader would do. I've been some place, some land and it's a beautiful place, that's where you find your peace at, and you have a wife that's contentious and angry, and she will not change her mind. Leave her. Again, what's the context, okay? Read the context of 1 Corinthians 7.15. It's about unbelieving spouses. It's got nothing to do with living off-grid or trying to move off-grid if she doesn't want to, okay? If you're the head of the home, you know, you're the man, you're the head of the home, okay? So if your wife doesn't want, your wife doesn't want to do something, just put your foot down and say, hey, I'm the man here, you know? I'm the man of the house. Say that, you know, it's just ridiculous, okay? This is not grounds for divorce in any means whatsoever, living off-grid heretical just weird heretical connection he tries to make according to the scriptures well the bible says till death do us part uh no that's a marriage vow okay there nobody said any marriage vows in the entire bible again get your traditions and your teachings of men separated from what the scriptures actually teach nobody said till death do us part that is a vow that is said now and then I agree with them there, obviously. This whole thing of death till death do us part or, you know, marriage or divorce is never allowed no matter what for any circumstance. Like the whole Stephen Anderson, new IFB cult says, yeah, that is heresy, okay? That is Roman Catholicism. It comes from the apostate, pagan, abominable perversion of the Christian faith that is the Roman Catholic Church, okay? Yeah, obviously, okay? So he, I agree with him there. But he's trying to 
say that, okay, but then get a divorce if you want to live off grid. No, that's not what the Bible teaches either. Both uh, systems are heresy. Then that whole thing there, again, it's a Roman Catholic thing, right? Get that thing figured out, right? God's called you to live in peace, brother, sister, and mostly brethren that I'm talking to right now. If you have a wife that's some high-maintenance city woman and she's lost and she wants nothing to do with you going out there and living out in nature, leave her. Well, again, a lot of the stuff you find out when you're dating them or when you're boyfriend, girlfriend, you know, if they're this high-maintenance picky, you know, give me this, give me that, you know, you often would find that out when you date them. So... A lot of times, when you, a lot of times, you know, in some cases, you know, the marriage is affected, but you know, just it's not always the case. You find the stuff out when you date them. You find the stuff out when your boyfriend, girlfriend, and then you realize, okay, this is not the person for me. That you don't marry them. That's simple. Plain and simple. If you have children, especially that you need to think about, and uh, they'd rather be out with you out there. And whatever well you might have a problem with the courts and things i realize it's a satanic court system that we have in this country but um you would do well to get away and to come out to a place like this for safety and for sanity that's another thing um if you're content living on the grid again i don't i don't care people want to live on the grid i'm not i'm not looking down on you or whatever else people want to do that that's fine i understand but uh there's a there's, why don't you do a whole sermon on it you know, almost guilt tripping your followers and other verses too. Not the other verses, other sermons where you try and guilt trip your followers into living off grid and you know condemning them for not foraging and that kind of stuff. And you know, ridiculous, it's cultic. There's a very special thing about being off grid. There's a very special thing about doing things for yourself. And again, not everyone's in the, the financial or physical uh, condition or position where they can do it. People would love to. I'd love to live off grid, but I'm not in that position where I can. So it's very easy for him to set all these standards when he himself does not have a nine to five job he's got to worry about. You know, he lives off donation money. And being self-sufficient, um, it's a real blessing. It's a lot of hard work, but uh, the rewards are just out of this world. They really are. So that's going to be it for this study. Hope it's been a challenge to you. Um, you know, you have one life to live. Don't waste it. I'll say that one more time. You have one life to live. Don't waste it. If you're a man and you want to live out in a place like this, make it happen. Okay? Again, it's easy to say make it happen, but not everyone's in that position where they can. Not everyone's in the condition or, or the financial well-being or that kind of stuff to just, quote, make it happen. It's not, not as easy as it sounds, especially when you have a 9-to-5 job, okay? When you don't work and you just live off donation money, well, you work, but you do personal stuff and not have a boss you have to worry about and that kind of stuff, then yeah, it's very easy to say just make it happen, but not everyone is able to just make it happen like that. If you're a young man you're single, um, you do well to look for a wife that is interested in nature. If you meet a girl and she just has to be taken to the finest restaurants and she doesn't like your car or your truck or whatever because it's just not new enough and she just has to be just perfect and she, you know, run away from her. Well, and again, a lot of the stuff you'd find out when you're dating that person or your boyfriend, girlfriend, you find out, okay, this person is just picky, you want everything this way or whatever, then you just don't marry them, you know? It's just foolishness. Oh, but Brother Brian, she's really good looking. I don't care. She'll make your life miserable. There's a lot of men out there that can testify to the fact that they uh, fell in lust with a woman. Maybe even fell in love with her. Excuse my sarcasm. <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, sarcasm. Because he's got a lot of pride in him. So he just, he's just used to using sarcasm. And obviously, there is a time and a place for sarcasm. But the way he does it, just puffed up and prideful. You know, Brian's got a lot of very serious pride issues and high-mindedness and everything. It's hard for me. It comes out so naturally. Uh, <laughs> but they fall in love with some girl. She's beautiful. They think, wow, I can't believe she's giving me the time of day. I think this is going to be great to be married to her. They're married for a while, and she makes this guy's life miserable. She's never content with anything. She's a high-maintenance woman. Well, then when you're dating a person, you find that out, don't marry them. 
that simple. You don't have to, you know, marry them because you, foolishness, heresy. And they just look for happiness all the time. Let's go to this vacation. Let's buy me this new car. Buy me this new fur coat. Well, some of them, you know, take me out to this place to eat. I want to go to the opera. I want to go to the theater. I want this. I want this. I want that. And if you're one of those types of women, let the word of God rebuke you. And here's another scripture he won't bring up, okay? On this thing of encouraging divorce for this reason, which is not grounds whatsoever. Ephesians chapter, I believe it's chapter 5, verse, I believe it's verse 31, or is it... Uh, Chapter 5, verse 31, or is it? Let me just search up the terminology. Sorry, I don't have the, the exact verse on the top of my head. See, I'm still fallible. I still make mistakes. Let no man put asunder. Yeah, it's Matthew chapter 19, verse 6. Yeah, that's, that's the verse I was looking for. Uh, Matthew chapter 19, verse 5, and said, For this cause shall man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twine shall be one flesh. Verse 6, Wherefore there are no more twine but one flesh. Wherefore there, What therefore hath God joined together? Let no, let not man put asunder. Sorry, I read the verse wrong. Okay. Don't let Brian put asunder what God basically put together, essentially. Okay. Don't divorce over something like living off grid. Okay. It's not scriptural grounds for divorce. Again, Fornication is grounds for divorce. Matthew chapter 5, verse 32, and Matthew chapter 19, verse 9. Okay? Uh, the unbelieving spouse leaving you just doesn't want to have anything to do with you, then yeah, that's also grounds too. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses at least 1 to 15. Okay? Yeah, there are grounds for divorce. Okay? But this, living off grid, oh, I want to live off grid, my wife won't let me, so I just divorce her. It's not scriptural at all. Nothing is scriptural or biblical about that. Okay? So don't, don't be deceived by that. Very, very heretical, very. Uh, very serious error. So anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.